In the vast landscapes of the Wild West, a different breed of outlaws emerged. But amid stories of tough gunmen and outlaws, a handful of women carved their own notoriety into the history books. These were no ordinary ladies. They were the Wild West's most notorious female outlaws, challenging the norms of their time and leaving a trail of legends in their wake. From bank robberies to daring escapes, their stories echo through the canyons of history. Join us as we ride through the dusty trails to uncover the Wild West's most notorious female outlaws. Number 10. Pearl Heart the Arizona Bandit. Pearl Hart, known as the Arizona Bandit, had a knack for robbing stagecoaches that rivaled the way some people casually draft emails. Yet for her, this was more than a mere pastime. In the throes of financial desperation on May 1899, driven by the need to support her young son Hart, along with her companion Joe Boot, embarked on a daring venture, the holdup of the Globe to Florence Coach. Disguised as a man, Hart executed the robbery with precision, walking away with a substantial $418 in cash. Notably, her compassion surfaced even during the crime, as she felt remorse for the passengers and generously handed each of them $1 to ensure they could purchase sustenance in town. However, the hands of the law eventually closed in on both Hart and Boot. In an audacious move, Hart managed to charm her way out of captivity with the assistance of some guards only to be recaptured shortly afterwards. The consequences were severe for Boot, who received a daunting 30-year sentence. Hart, on the other hand, faced a peculiar twist of fate, acquittal for the stagecoach robbery, only to be slapped with a seven-year sentence for pilfering the driver's pistol. Adding a surprising chapter to her story, Hart found herself pregnant while behind bars. In an unexpected turn, the governor of Arizona extended a pardon to her in 1902, perhaps as a way to save face in light of her impending motherhood. The contours of her life post-pardon remain elusive, shrouded in varying accounts. Some narratives posit that Hart transitioned into the world of acting, while others suggest her involvement in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Alternatively, there are claims that she chose a quieter life, settling down with rancher Calvin Bywater. This chapter of her life was characterized by a transformation. She became known as soft-spoken, kind, and a good citizen in all respects. Number 9. Eleanor Dumont, Madame Mustache. Eleanor Dumont, a captivating figure of the mid-1800s in San Francisco, began her journey as a blackjack dealer with an air of sophistication and femininity. Born in the vibrant city of New Orleans in 1828, she made her way to California at the age of 21, swiftly establishing herself as a shrewd card player, blending skill with an undeniable charm. In her early years, Dumont epitomized elegance, dressing impeccably and adorning her hair in a regal pile. However, her journey took an unexpected turn when suspicions arose at the Bella Union Saloon, leading to her dismissal on grounds of alleged card sharping. Essentially, she was accused of cheating at cards. Dumont left San Francisco armed with a considerable sum of money and headed for Nevada City. In Nevada City, a nod to her favored card game, Blackjack. Miners flocked to her tables, drawn not only by the allure of the cards, but also by the magnetic presence of the sophisticated dealer. Despite numerous attempts to seduce her, Dumont remained elusive, her heart reserved for a future chapter in Carson City. It was in Carson City that Dumont's life took a tragic turn. Falling in love with a man named Jack McKnight, she purchased a ranch with dreams of a shared future. However, McKnight revealed his true colors as a swindler, selling the ranch and absconding with the profits. In a desperate act of justice, Dumont, betrayed and wounded, resorted to a fatal confrontation. She shot McKnight dead. The subsequent chapters of Dumont's life paint a poignant picture of decline. She faced the cruel mockery of being nicknamed Madame Mustache, bearing the weight of a pronounced line of hair on her upper lip, as if the indignity were not enough. Her card-playing prowess, once the talk of saloons, deserted her in the latter stages of her life. In a haunting turn of events, the depths of Dumont's despair led her to a final lonely walk out of town one fateful night in 1879. Armed with a bottle of red wine and a fatal dose of morphine, she sought solace in the quiet outskirts, leaving behind the echoes of her turbulent existence. When dawn broke, she was discovered lifeless her tale ending in the shadows of a complex and ultimately tragic life. Number 8. Lillian Smith. The Indian Princess. Lillian Frances Smith, 
a name that resonates through the dust of history, was more than just a rival to the famed Annie Oakley in Buffalo Bill's Wild West spectacle. While her story intertwines with the luminaries of her time, Smith's narrative transcends the shadows cast by those who sought to define her, especially the men who aimed to exploit her exceptional talents. Her journey into the world of sharpshooting was not a tale of self-discovery, but rather a path carved by the ambitions of her controlling and profit-minded father. Recognizing the potential to turn his daughter's remarkable skill at shattering glass balls into a lucrative venture, Smith's father thrust her into the limelight. Thus, she embarked on a journey that showcased not only her marksmanship, but also embraced a fabricated Native American persona. At the tender age of 14, Smith joined the ranks of Wild Bill Cody's troop. However, it wasn't long before she transformed herself into Winona, assuming the guise of an alleged Indian princess. In a world where authenticity often took a back seat to spectacle, Smith embraced an offensive role, portraying a flirtatious and audacious Indian character with a penchant for the bottle. In this, she became the counterpoint to the more demure and Victorian Annie Oakley. The stage, however, is an unpredictable arena, and Smith's journey with Buffalo Bill's show met an abrupt end. Speculations abound that jealousy perhaps from Oakley played a hand in Smith's departure. Undeterred, Smith ventured forth on her own, navigating the highs and lows of love while taking her Indian princess act to diverse stages, from the exotic allure of Hawaii to the stately East Coast, and even the grandeur of the World's Fair. When the curtains fell on her life in 1930 at the age of 59, Smith left behind a legacy adorned in Sue garb. Her departure marked not just the end of a tumultuous personal saga, but also the closing act of a woman who defied categorization. Beyond the staged rivalries and fabricated personas, Lillian Frances Smith emerges as a resilient pioneer of the Wild West, navigating a frontier where the lines between reality and spectacle blurred. In death, she found a final resting place, adorned in the attire of the Sioux, a symbolic homage to the complex fabric of her life and the roles she played on and off the stage. Number 7. Rose Dunn, The Rose of Cimarron. Rose Dunn's journey unfolded against the backdrop of a family with a dubious reputation. Born into a clan of ne'er-do-wells, Dunn's trajectory took an unexpected turn when her brothers introduced her to the notorious Dalton Gang a criminal syndicate operating in the tumultuous landscapes of Kansas during the early 1890s. It was within this shadowy realm that she encountered George Bitter Creek Newcomb, a figure who would become both the architect of her fate and the love of her life. Falling deeply for Newcomb, who later became a member of the Dalton Gang, Rose Dunn found herself entangled in a web of crime and intrigue that would define her legacy. Newcomb bestowed upon her the moniker that would echo through the annals of Wild West history, the Rose of Cimarron, an homage to her beauty and poise, even in the face of peril. Indeed, she earned this epithet as she navigated the dangerous currents of outlaw life. The climax of Rose Dunn's outlaw saga unfolded on the fateful afternoon of September 1, 1893, in Ingalls, Oklahoma. The Dalton gang, ensconced in a saloon, found themselves in a fierce gunfight with U.S. Marshals. In a display of unwavering loyalty and daring bravery, Dunn reportedly dashed through a hail of bullets to deliver a Winchester rifle to the prone Newcomb. Some accounts even suggest that she didn't hesitate to fire shots herself before placing the weapon in Newcomb's hands, an act that could easily be dubbed relationship goals in the annals of criminal history. The tides turned two years later, when Dunn's brothers betrayed Newcomb to the authorities, leading to the outlaw's demise. With Newcomb gone, Rose Dunn's life took a different course. Surprisingly, she transitioned from the thrilling world of outlawry to the arms of respectability. In a twist of fate, she married a distinguished Oklahoma politician, leaving behind the tumultuous chapters of her criminal past. The remainder of Rose Dunn's life unfolded in the quiet embrace of mundane respectability. Her journey, marked by love, loyalty, and the echoes of gunfire, encapsulates the complex interplay of relationships and circumstances that defined the lives of those who walked the razor's edge between outlaws and ordinary citizens in the Wild West. Number 6. Kate Horney Big Nose Mary Catherine Horney, affectionately known as Miss Doc Holliday, was more than just a companion to the dentist-turned-gunslinger. She was a dynamic force in her own right. Born around 1850 in the Kingdom of Hungary, her family's journey led them to Mexico, where her father served as the personal surgeon to Emperor Maximilian. However, upheaval struck when the emperor's government collapsed, prompting the Horney family to relocate to Iowa. You, you crazy son of a 
Life took a challenging turn for Kate when she found herself orphaned, and the adversity deepened as she lost her husband and son to yellow fever. into a profound love. Horony's devotion to Holiday knew no bounds. When Holiday faced arrest for a violent altercation over a card game, Horony displayed her audacious loyalty. She set fire to a shed in a daring move, orchestrating a distraction that allowed her to confront the situation head on. Unyielding, she went further, boldly threatening to shoot Holiday's jailer if he didn't release him. Miraculously, her bold actions secured Holiday's freedom, solidifying the intensity of their bond. The couple's journey took them to Tombstone. The setting for the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral. However, as the winds of fate would have it, Horony wasn't present during that tumultuous event. Concerned for her safety, Holiday insisted she leave Tombstone, a decision that, in hindsight, marked the beginning of the end of their passionate love affair. The ebb and flow of life eventually brought Mary Catherine Horony to her final resting place. Despite the tempestuous nature of her earlier years, she defied the odds and lived until the age of 89. Her journey culminated in the Arizona Pioneer Home, a testament to the resilience and strength that defined her unconventional life. In exploring the life of Mary Catherine Horony, one cannot overlook the complexities and challenges she faced. From the Hungarian landscapes of her birth to the upheavals in Mexico and the hardships of Dodge City, her life was a fabric woven with threads of resilience. The intersection with figures like Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday added a layer of intrigue to her narrative, showcasing her as a woman unafraid to navigate the tumultuous currents of the Wild West. Horony's legacy extends beyond being a mere footnote in the story of Doc Holliday. She was a woman who stood tall in the face of adversity, a beacon of strength during a time when the West was as wild as the tales suggest. Her audacity and unwavering commitment to those she loved define her as more than just an accomplice to a notorious gunslinger. She was a formidable presence in her own right. Number 5. Etta Place, the Outlaw Queen. Etta Place, a woman of mystery and intrigue, entered the annals of history as a triple threat in the company of notorious outlaws, the Sundance Kid, Harry Longabaugh, and Butch Cassidy, Robert Leroy Parker. Their fateful encounter unfolded within the clandestine confines of a San Antonio brothel around the turn of the 20th century, painting a vivid backdrop to a tale that has since been shrouded in the mists of time. Your times is over, and you're gonna die bloody. The fragments of Place's life, unfortunately, have slipped through the fingers of history, leaving only whispers and fragments in their wake. The enigma deepens as some historians propose a tantalizing connection between Place and another famed woman of the Wild West, Anne Bassett, speculating whether they might have been the same person. The canvas of her life, painted with conjecture and hearsay, invites us to decipher the hues of truth from the palette of myth. Legend weaves a narrative where Place, Amidst the clamor of heists orchestrated by Longabaugh and Parker, played a pivotal role as the guardian of escape horses, a silent accomplice to the banditry that echoed through the canyons of the American West. Whispers suggest she may have single-handedly thwarted pursuers, fending off entire posses with an act of courage that echoed the resilience of the frontier itself. Delving into the pages of the book Red Light Women of the Rocky Mountains, a portrait of place emerges as not merely a companion, but a confederate to Longabaugh's outlawry, embracing a life of crime that blurred the lines between right and wrong. Following a quicksilver decision, she fled with her infamous partners to the distant landscapes of Argentina, becoming an active participant in a daring bank robbery that echoed with the echoes of their Wild West escapades. The narrative takes a dramatic turn as the tale unfolds on foreign soil. Legends etch into the annals that the infamous duo, Longabaugh and Parker, met their demise under the thundering hooves of the Bolivian cavalry. 
Did Place meet a similar fate in that fateful confrontation, or did she carve her destiny in the windswept expanses of the American West? The shroud of uncertainty thickens as divergent paths emerge from the mist. Some claim she too succumbed to the same bullets that silenced her companions, a final chapter etched in the rugged landscapes of South America. Others speculate that she retraced her steps to the heartland of the American West, taking on a new identity, perhaps as a resilient worker, a dedicated teacher, or even a valiant soldier in the echoes of the Mexican-American War. Whether she met her end on a foreign shore or returned to the American frontier, her story echoes the resilience and adaptability of those who dared to defy the norms of their time. Number 3. Pearl Devere Pearl Devere's unconventional journey began in the late 1870s when she carved her niche as a sporting woman. Hailing from Chicago and raised in Indiana, she ventured westward intending to profit from the solitude of men seeking companionship. Her arrival in Denver was marked by a discreet persona. She presented herself as Mrs. Isabel Martin, a guise that proved fruitful until the Silver Panic of 1893 spurred her to seek new prospects in the burgeoning boom town of Cripple Creek. In Cripple Creek, Pearl Devere seized the opportunity to establish her brothel in the town's red light district, quickly turning it into a thriving business. Her clientele consisted of the well-to-do residents of Cripple Creek, and she distinguished herself by ensuring the well-being and care of the young women under her employ. Despite her unconventional profession, Devere sought a semblance of respectability. Back in Indiana, her family remained unaware of her role as a madame, believing she pursued a career as a dressmaker. In 1895, she attempted to weave the threads of respectability further by marrying C.B. Flynn, a mill owner. However, the threads unraveled when a devastating fire swept through town, consuming both her brothel and Flynn's mill, effectively dissolving the marriage. While Flynn relocated to Mexico, Devere remained in Cripple Creek, undeterred. Undeterred by the setbacks, Devere rebounded by opening another entertainment establishment, naming it the Old Homestead. Despite the challenges, she maintained a commitment to the well-being of those in her employ, and her reputation for hosting fabulously decadent parties on June 1897 added to the allure of the old homestead. Tragedy struck when, after one such extravagant affair, Devere retired to her room. Struggling to find rest, she resorted to laudanum, a common remedy of the time. The following day revealed a somber reality. Pearl Devere was found lifeless, marking the end of a chapter in the colorful history of Cripple Creek. The tale of Pearl Devere, born from the vibrant streets of Chicago and raised in the heart of Indiana, weaves through the landscape of the Wild West, embracing both the allure of prosperity and the harsh blows of fate. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Among the Wild West's most notorious female outlaws, Laura Bullion, much like Etta Place, found herself entangled in the infamous exploits of the Wild Bunch, becoming a central figure in some of their most notorious deeds. Born to outlaw Henry Bullion, her foray into a life of crime commenced at the tender age of 13 when she crossed paths with Ben Kilpatrick, known as the Tall Texan, and William Carver, members of the lawless gang led by Butch Cassidy and Sundance. Welcomed into the Wild Bunch with open arms, Laura Bullion actively participated in their criminal escapades. Her roles included forging signatures and contributing to the success of various robberies, earning her the moniker, The Rose of the Wild Bunch, from her fellow members. Among their exploits was the audacious Great Northern Train Robbery in July 1901, where the gang absconded with a substantial loot amounting to $60,000. However, the tides turned for bullion shortly after the heist. Following her arrest, authorities discovered $8,500 worth of banknotes in her possession. Subsequently, she faced the consequences of her criminal endeavors, serving a two-and-a-half-year prison sentence. Number 2. Sally Skull Sally Skull, a name that would soon send shivers down the spines of many, started her journey as Sally Newman in 1817. Born in the heart of Illinois, little did she know that her life would become a gripping tale of grit and infamy. At the tender age of six, 
Her family packed their belongings and embarked on a journey to Texas, thrusting young Sally into the unforgiving realm of the Wild West. Life in the frontier was not for the faint of heart, and Sally quickly learned this harsh reality. A vivid recollection etched in her memory was the day she witnessed her mother's fierce act of self-preservation. A Native American man, perhaps seeking shelter, made the grave mistake of sliding his foot under their cabin door. Sally stood in awe as her mother, with unyielding determination, wielded a blade and severed the intruder's toes. It was a stark introduction to the brutality that permeated everyday life. As Sally matured, so did her audacity. A particular incident showcased her fearless demeanor when she confronted a neighbor who hesitated to stand up to another native intruder. In a bold move, she demanded the man surrender his gun, asserting that if he couldn't handle the situation, she would take matters into her own hands. This boldness would become a defining trait that would shape her tumultuous path. In 1833, Sally's life took a turn Thank you.